Hey everybody, welcome to J Stern Designs and welcome to the Baby Lock Ovation Serger Manual. This is the new series of videos that I'm starting today and I decided to do them because I've been using the Ovation Serger to work on a new class for pattern review and I thought it might be fun to use the instruction manual to give you quick tips and instruction about everything in the manual, which would be everything serger. The cool thing is, if you own a baby lock ovation, then the information that I'm, I'm giving will be very easy for you to find. So if you have a specific question, you'll be able to find it because in each title of each video, I will put the page number um, that I'm doing that day. So, you know, each episode will feature a single page or maybe a couple pages of the instruction manual. If you are thinking of buying a baby lock ovation, it's a great opportunity for you to get an in-depth tour of the baby lock. Um, and if you don't own a baby lock serger, I wanna encourage you to follow along with me because most of the information that I'm gonna be sharing with you is generic to every make and model. So this serger has plenty of wonderful features. There are features on it that other sergers don't have, which I will also be explaining, but for example, um, a stitch length lever, uh, a stitch length knob is a stitch length knob. So, as I go through the different features on the machine today, you know, you may have a question about different um, features, different parts of the machine, and you may have the same part. It's very likely that you'll have the same part on your machine, so you can sort of apply what I'm talking about here to what you're working with at home, and if you have a question that um, pertains to whatever the topic is that particular day or any other question for that matter, you can post them below the video or in my blog at JSTERN Designs and I will find the answer for you. So I don't want um, people who don't have baby locks to feel left out because this is gonna be fun for everybody. And um, that's it. So that's what we're gonna be doing for a little bit. Um, there are quite a few pages in this instruction manual. There's 80, um, 89, 89 pages. So there's gonna be quite a few videos. There won't be 89 videos because certain pages I will probably combine if there are just a few quick things on each page. But the cool thing is, like I said, the name of the video will include the page numbers. So it'll be very easy to find information if you're looking for it. Um, Today what I wanna do is I wanna start with the overview of the ovation. Um, if your ovation is still sitting in a box and you wanna have a step-by-step -step, um, instructions on how to take it out of the box, I do have a video for that. So I will post the link to that in the blog post that goes with this um, video. So you can see that if you missed it, I did it a few months ago. Um, so basically what I want to do now is I just want to go over all of the features. And then on Monday, I'm going to show you all of the accessories and explain what they do. So that's going to be on Tuesday. And then I will carry on from there. So let's get started. I'm working on page five, which is the overview of the ovation. The first thing on the list is the carry handle. The carry handle is right here. It tucks down into the machine and it rotates up like this. This is very handy for carrying this machine and moving it around. I would pick it up with my stronger hand and I'd probably support it with my other hand underneath because it is pretty heavy. So this is the carry handle. The next thing I wanna talk about is the uh, chain and cover hem needle tension dial. This is really cool because the Ovation does not have tension adjustments for the overlock needles and loopers, but it does have tension adjustment for the cover hem and chain stitches. So this dial right here is for the needle tension on those stitches, and it goes from zero all the way up to nine. And sort of a middle of the road to leave it on to get started would be somewhere between four and six. So I leave mine on five unless I need to adjust that. 
Um, the next thing I wanna point out, number three, is the um, presser foot tension dial. Number three is the presser foot pressure adjustment dial, and that's right here. So it's sort of diagonally below the um, stitch needle tension dial here. And what this does is it controls how hard the presser foot is pressing against the feed dogs. You would want to adjust this for a few different reasons. If you have heavy fabric and it's not, it's having trouble feeding, if you make the pressure harder, it'll press the fabric in between the bottom of the presser foot and the feed dogs and it will help those feed dogs get that fabric underneath the presser foot. If you're working with something delicate, you don't want the feed dogs to dig into it, so you might wanna reduce the pressure. So that's what this dial is here, that's number three. Number four is the thread cutter, and that's located right here. I wanna do a little demo for you to show you why the thread cutter is really a good idea. So I'm just gonna stitch this muslin. When you get to the end of your your fabric that you're surging, how many of you do this? So let me tell you why swinging the fabric around and letting the um, knife cut your tail is not a good idea. When you do that, the, the feed dogs are yanking that um, thread tail back under the presser foot and it could get tangled in the knife or in the loopers and cause damage to your machine. So instead of doing that, use the thread cutter. And let me just show you. I'm gonna go like this. And then I'm just gonna go like that. And then I don't risk, you know, damaging my machine by using the knife and feeding it back through. In the back of the presser foot, you can see this little screw right here. That screw is for tightening the quilting guide on. So you put it through this hole right here and then you tighten that screw. So that's what that is. The presser foot release lever is this right here. Okay, and watch what happens. If I raise my presser foot and I press this release lever, look what happens. The presser foot comes off. So that's how you get your presser foot off. Now, I'll show you how to get it back on in a minute. I just wanna keep in order with the instruction manual. So we're on to number seven now. Number seven is the needle clamp. Um, the needle clamp is this piece of metal right here. This is where you insert all the needles up from the bottom. You can see I have both overlock needles inserted right now. And there's spots for two overlock needles, the O1 and O2 needles. And then there's also spaces for three cover stitch or chain stitch needles, C1, C2, and C3. So there's a place to put five needles in this machine. And typically if your serger is, has a five thread feature, that's how this would be set up. There'd be three in the front and two in the back. Number eight is the needle height viewing area. And this is really one of your friends built into your serger. And I know that many different brands have this. Basically, it's a little window up at the top here. Um, I know it's, it might be hard to see them. I'll move these, these threads out of the way. But basically, you can see the tops of the needles if they're inserted properly. So when you're changing your needles or, or changing the position of your needle for a different stitch, you always wanna look and see if you can see the top of the needle. Because if you can, that means it's inserted up all the way. If it's not inserted up all the way, you have a chance of skipping stitches or other things that have poor stitch quality. So make sure your needles are inserted all the way up and you see them in this needle height viewing area. Number nine is the needle clamp screws. And I'm gonna use the actual screwdriver that you would use to tighten them to show you. Basically, after you get your needle inserted, you use this screwdriver and you insert it in the round hole and you can righty tighty lefty loosey to firmly hold the needle in position. Okay, so you can see for every needle height viewing area, you also have a 
needle clamp screw. So there's one for each needle. Number 10 is the snap-on presser foot. And remember, I just showed you how to remove it with the release lever down here. Well, to snap it back on, you just lower the shank back down on the foot, lining it up like that, and it snaps right on. So that's why it's called a snap-on presser foot. The presser foot also has grooves in it to accommodate all the different needle positions. So that's another thing about this presser foot. The needle plate is this metal plate that's screwed onto the top of the machine here. And it has spaces for the feed dogs to come through and pull your fabric. It has holes in it for the needles to go down to bring the thread down to the loopers to form the stitches. It also has different pins over here which help create the width of the stitches that you need. So these pins are sometimes known as stitch fingers because that's what the stitch forms on. You can see here that this one on the far right is the stitch finger that creates the width for a four thread or a three thread wide. If you're doing a rolled hem, then it skips, it doesn't include that in your stitch width. And the Ovation is one of the machines that doesn't require you to adjust your stitch finger when you're going back and forth between um, like a four thread wide or three thread wide, and then some of the narrow stitches in the rolled hem. Your serger, if you have a different model, make and model, you may have to engage and disengage the stitch finger to go from the wider stitches to the narrow stitches. So make sure you check that out um, if you're unfamiliar with the stitch finger. In the Ovation's case, it's built right into the needle plate and you don't need to adjust. Okay, so that's the upper blade. That's what cuts the fabric as you serge along. The stitch width adjustment dial is right here. And even though it's the stitch width adjustment, it's the cutting width really supports the amount or the width of the, the loopers. Look what happens when I move the stitch width adjustment dial. See how the upper knife either is closer to the needles or I can push it away so it's farther away from the needles. The reason why you want to be able to do that is if you're working with a four thread, then you want to have more fabric to support the loopers, the looper threads. And if you're working with a rolled hem or a narrow hem, you want it to cut off more of the fabric so there's less there. So that's how you control that by using this dial to slide the knife either towards the um, needles or away. The side cover, is this section of the machine here. You can see it opens right up and it allows you to get in there and clean all the lint out. It also allows you access to the tails of the chain and cover stitch thread. When it, after it gets threaded, it ends up in this little basket right here. So it allows easy access and it allows you to clean. Okay, the cutting blade locking dial is this dial right here. And what this allows you to do is keep the knife from being engaged. So if I engage this dial, I'm gonna switch it to lock. See how the blade went down? Um, that way, if you wanna do a cover hem and you have the flat table on there, the knife will be out of the way. There may also be situations where you may want to serge without cutting, so you can do that. To re-engage the knife, you just switch it back and then when you turn your hand wheel, see what happens? It, it, it raises. The next thing, number 16, is the stitch length rolled hem adjustment dial. This is right here. And I just wanna point out on this baby lock ovation, you have two, two ranges for your stitch um, length. Okay, so you have a set from one to four for your standard overlock surging, and that controls the density of the stitch. So the closer you go to zero, the closer the stitches will be together. And then if you go past zero, there's another set from one to four, and that's your rolled hem stitch length. And that will allow you to get your rolled hem from being very dense where you can't see the fabric between the threads to very light and spaced out if you need something that's not quite as dense. So you have two different options 
on your stitch length on the ovation. Most sergers have just one stitch length range. The, the principle is the same, so if you're on a number like four or maybe five, you're gonna have a very loose stitch and the closer you go to zero, the more dense your stitch will be, whether it's a rolled hem or a four thread. So just know that if your serger only has one set of, um, or one range for stitch length, it works the same way. The next thing is the cutting blade cover, and that's this cover right here. When it's closed, it's got this protective um, edge here that protects your fingers from the knife and the loopers and everything. Um, and you can keep it up while you're surging. Matter of fact, it won't surge unless it is up. All right, so now we've come to one of my favorite features, the needle drop drawer. How many of you have dropped your needle into the machine when you're trying to insert it into the machine? I've done it and it's a pain to fish your needle out. Well, on this machine, see this little plastic handle here? If I pull it out, look what I get. I get this little drawer that's magnetized. So actually, like if I drop my needle down there, it, it would stick to it. And then I can pull it out and get my needle back and then continue to try to put it in the machine. So that's a very cool feature. And to get it back in, if I just tilt the machine, you can see there's a little guide for it right there, the track for it. This would be considered the front cover. So it opens and shuts like this. I just wanna point out that to get the cutting blade cover open, you have to open the front cover first. So you open the front cover, then you use this little handle here and you pull to the right and down to get the cutting blade cover open. The next thing is the slot to put in the knee lift. So you would insert that there. And when we talk about accessories on Tuesday, I'll show you how to use that. The threading lever is how you set the machine to either surge or thread. Because this has the air feeding system, it has to engage the tubes that guide the thread from the ports out to the eye of the um, loopers. All right, I'm gonna put this on threading and then watch over here what's gonna happen as I rotate my hand wheel. When everything's lined up, the tubes snap in place. So now I'm ready to thread. Um, when I'm done threading, I just switch back to surging and now I can move my hand wheel again. And this is also a safety feature because I leave, if I leave it on threading and try to close my doors, it won't let me close my door until I switch it to surging. Another feature that makes this really versatile is if you're working with specialty threads that are heavy and it's gonna cause too much tension to, to thread them through the ports, you can use this bypass thread guide instead and then continue on, and it makes working with heavier threads much easier. The next thing is number 23, that is the differential feed adjustment lever. It's right here, and notice how I can't tell what it is with the door open. So if your front cover is open, you can't see the settings. So make sure that's shut, and then you can see now I have my settings for my differential feed. I'm gonna talk about differential feed when I get to it in the instruction manual. I just wanna say for now, if you're completely unfamiliar with it, it's how you can control how fast the front feed dogs are moving compared to the back feed dogs. You have two sets of feed dogs on this machine or any machine that has differential feed. When your machine is set on N for neutral or normal, that means both sets of feed dogs are going at the same speed and that's perfect for woven fabrics. And then if you're working with knits or thin fabrics, you're gonna change this. But again, I'll talk about that when I get to it in the instruction manual. The hand wheel, which moves the needles up and down and the um, loopers left and right is here. Let me turn it towards you. Then on the side here, let me just show you, you've got the foot control jack. That's where you can plug in your foot control. It's right there and you also have your power um, receptacle. So number 26, this is where you plug it in. And then this is where you turn it on. So foot control, power cord, um, on off switch. 28 is the 
push to thread button, which is right here. And that's what actually whooshes the air through and does this amazing threading job. And again, when we get to it in the instruction manual, I'm gonna show you that. Okay, you have three of them, and that's gonna be numbered 29, 30, and 31. You have your chain looper right here, your lower looper, and your upper looper. It says right on the machine, do not oil. Do not stick anything in there except the thread you are threading because you wouldn't want anything to get lodged in there because then the air threading would not work. So all you're ever going to put in there are the thread tails that you're trying to thread through to the loopers. Now you can see the, the thread stand it runs across the back of the machine here and it wraps around the side. But underneath the chain looper and lower looper thread holders, there is an accessory train. It just slides out like this. I love it. You can keep all of the things that you use frequently, like your um, screwdrivers, um, your tweezers, and different things right in there so you, you never lose them. Okay, the stitch selector lever is right here. Okay, and it goes from A to D. And basically, when you go to thread your machine, for a certain stitch, it's gonna tell you what to put the stitch selector on. Um, basically, the stitch selector is what adjusts your tensions for you. That's why there isn't individual thread tensions on the needles and loopers. Um, it does it for you, so between A and D. The extension thread stand is this one that's in the back. It snaps on to the main thread stand to hold three more spools of thread. And then you have the telescopic antenna and thread guides. You can put them down and you can put them up. And it also has the, the thread guides up at the top. Remember we had a separate tension unit for the chain and cover needle? Well, we also have a separate tension unit for the chain looper on the right side of the machine and it goes from snugger for the chain stitch to looser for the cover stitches so you'll be able to get a perfect stitch no matter what you're trying to do. The Ovation has um, a wave stitch which um, basically pulls the threads up to the top and then back to the bottom, up to the top, back to the bottom and it creates a wave um, between two different colors. It's very cool. Just know that if you wanna stitch that on the Ovation, you have to put your uh, wave overlock selector lever on wave. If you're just using regular overlock stitches, switch it down to um, overlock stitches. Okay, we're getting close to the end here. We have the upper and lower looper thread fine tuning knob. Now, if you need to loosen or tighten them, you can fine tune that right here. So you can make it a little tighter or a little looser just to make sure you can get that perfect stitch. The presser foot release lever is right here. That's another cool thing about the Ovation. It's right in your sight. When it's lifted up, all the tensions are released. There's no tension on the thread. So to engage the tension units, you need to put the lever down. It puts the presser foot down and you're ready to surge. So if you start surging and the lever is up, you're gonna notice that the stitch is very loose and it might get jammed up. Just remember this needs to be down, okay? And I really love it that it's right in front on this machine. All right, the upper looper positioning knob is another thing inside here. This is going to disengage the upper looper. So if I put it in the down position, watch what happens when I rotate the hand wheel. See how the upper looper is staying down? That way I can put my cover hem table on and it won't hit it, okay, so it's completely disengaged. To re-engage it, you just switch it back to up and when you turn the hand wheel, it pops back up. All right, we have two more things and we are done. First thing is, there's a separate speed control. That's number 41. And if you're new to surging, or if you're working on something that you really need to follow the edge of a curve, let's say, or something delicate, you probably don't wanna run the serger at full speed. You could slow it down, so no matter how hard you press on the gas, you've got that additional speed control. I use it all the time when I'm trying to do something that's very delicate or it needs to be really accurate. 
because I like to put the pedal to the metal. This prevents me from doing that. And then the last thing is there's a um, subsidiary looper. And what this is is if you're doing two thread surging, like a two thread flat lock, for example, you don't use the upper looper. So what you do is you engage the subsidiary looper and what it does is it fits into the hole of the upper looper. You're closing that off so it's, you know, it's, it's shut and then it allows you to create two thread stitches. You only use it for two thread stitches. If you're working with another maker model, you know, check your instruction manual for that. Sometimes it's a little piece of metal that's you have to insert into the machine. And sometimes it's like this where you just engage it or disengage it. So check your instruction manuals for that. If you're working on a two thread stitch, you need to um, you know, cover that upper looper um, eye of the upper looper. Okay, so that's what that is. All right, so that's the basic overview of the Ovation Serger. If you have any questions or comments about it, you can post them below or you can visit my blog at J Stern Designs. If there's something on your serger and you have questions about it, you can also ask me those questions because I want to include everybody. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. And on Tuesday, we're going to go over all the accessories. So I hope you'll join me then. And between now and then, I hope you have a great weekend. And um, thank you for watching.